Good morning, people of Emmanuel. Good morning. We are glad to be here with you to share the Word of God with you and to tell you a little bit of the story of, of Pablo International Ministries. I want to base my message on a text that will be very familiar with you, but I am a few weeks late with it, really. It was the gospel back on Epiphany, but um, it still fits for my message from Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, <coughs> excuse me, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him in the name of Jesus. Some items from the news. A trio of gunmen, Paris, France, a trio of gunmen slaughter 90 people, injure 400. In Orlando, Florida, 49 killed, 53 wounded by some gunmen. In Istanbul, Turkey, 39 killed, 70 wounded. In <clears throat> London, England, a man drives a car into pedestrians on the south side of Westminster Bridge, injuring 49, killing four. And I could go on and on and list many, many such incidents and they all have one thread in common. I'm sure you recognize that common thread. <clears throat> those incidents were all carried out by those who call themselves followers of Islam. We simply refer to them as radical Islamic terrorists, and that's a large designation that in <clears throat> includes a variety of different groups that seek to cause havoc and death. Here's another bit of news. There could very well be followers of Islam that live in your neighborhood. In fact, I'm certain of it there across the street or in the next block. They go to the same stores that you go to. They work in the same buildings. You see them <coughs> on the streets. They are here. Now that may not make us very comfortable when you picture the concept of Islamic terrorists on one side and people living in their neighborhood on the other, both of them followers of Islam, let me assure you that the radical group is a very, very small group. They represent a very tiny portion of the followers of Islam. But at the same time, we need to get into who or what is a follower of Islam. We call them <clears throat> or they call themselves Muslims. Their God is Allah. Their Bible is the Quran. They live a life that is governed every day by the tenets of their faith. If you get right down to the person, they are like us in many respects, two eyes, two ears, a nose, a mouth. If you cut them, they bleed. If they, they have the same hopes and dreams for their family. They want their children to succeed. They want things to go well. Thank you, Pastor. They want things to do well. want their life to go well. Most of them, most all of them, are not radical, but they have been taught differently. There is one fundamental difference between a follower of Islam and those of you who are gathered here in this sanctuary this morning. <clears throat> and that is that you have been taught Jesus Christ. They have not. A Muslim doesn't understand about a God of grace and mercy. He has no idea what forgiveness really is. He doesn't understand a God of love, a God who cares for us so much that he would die for us. That's foreign to their understanding. They know law and they know rules and they're searching. And that's why I chose that reading from the second chapter of Matthew. The story of the wise men is the story of men who came from the east. That's where we identify <coughs> the or origins of Islam is in the east. And they came searching. And I believe most Muslims are searching as well. When we talk about mission work and 
Pastor talked about mission work with the children. We usually think of missionaries as someone who has been trained, who has learned another language, who is very familiar with a different a culture, a different type of living, and they are sent overseas to go into that culture, into that language group, and there to share the story of Jesus. And that is mission work. And we are grateful to God for the people who are willing to do that. But in this day and age, mission work is right across the street. If you want to find a people of a different language group, of a different culture, open your front door. They're there, right in your neighborhood. And that's the picture I see <clears throat> from the story of the wise men. As they came from the east, so the Islamic movement is coming from the east. And they're coming here searching. Now, I, <clears throat> I will admit that most of them don't know that they are searching, but they are. They're searching for something that will take away the guilt that they're carrying, that all of us seem to want to carry around. They're looking for something that will give hope in the midst of hopelessness, something that will bring light into the midst of a dark world that we live in. Their religion doesn't give them that light and doesn't offer them much hope. The religion is a religion of law. Now just saying that doesn't distinguish Islam from Christianity because we too are a religion of law. Your pastors don't do you a favor if they don't tell you about the law of God. And last I heard, those are not ten suggestions. Those are ten commandments. God actually expects us to live that way. But we just admitted this morning that we don't. That we don't obey the commands of God. Indeed, we fail at every turn. Now suppose you came here and you admitted, <clears throat> yes, I am a sinner, and your pastor says to you, gee, that's too bad, go try harder. That's the only message that Islam has for the sinner. Go try harder. They don't understand that we have a God who has come to this earth, who lived and died and rose again, so that we can pronounce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. They don't understand a God who will come to us in the form of bread and, and wine. <coughs> that we will, excuse me, that we will receive his very body and blood given and shed for you, you know how it goes, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the God we have. And that's the God we seek to share with those who do not know him. Pablo, as Pastor said, is an acronym. People of the book Lutheran Outreach. The Muslims, when they refer to Christians, call us people of the book, and we are, the Bible. And we tend, in our plan and our hope and our purpose is to share the story of that Bible with them. Pablo has, was started in 1993 in the Detroit area where the largest group of Muslims are concent concentrated in this country. And since its inception, Pablo has planted 84 churches, <clears throat> trained over 116 missionaries to work in multicultural communities in the U.S. and overseas. Pablo has found the most effective way is to take people from those cultures and train them as Christian witnesses. We have trained <coughs> and deployed men and women from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Egypt, India, Iran, Iraq, Morocco, Pakistan, Senegal, Somalia, Sudan. Over 2,000 former Muslims, Hindus, and Sikhs have come to know Christ and have been baptized through the efforts of these ethnic missionaries. Pablo also helps to meet the basic physical and social needs of people, refugees, immigrants who come here with nothing. This work is going on in places like California and Illinois and Michigan and Missouri and Nebraska and Minnesota and New York and right here in Wisconsin. The largest unreached group of people in the world are the followers of Islam. These, those coming here as refugees and immigrants need to hear the word. And the most effective <coughs> way to do that, <coughs> excuse me, the most effective way to do that 
is to build relations with them, with them, to meet them where they are. When they are need of basic things for life, you provide those for them. And they ask, why are you doing that? And you get to say, because we love you and Jesus does too. And that begins a relationship where the story of Jesus can be shown. That work is being carried on right here in southeastern Wisconsin by this man right in front of us, a man by the name of Ibu Fay, who I've come to know and love dearly. Uh, Ibu is a former Muslim who, know, who knows and loves Jesus. Uh, you're gonna, if you have some time after this service, please stick around in the fellowship hall. Ibu's got quite a story to tell. Ibu, why don't you come up and just tell him just a little bit about yourself? Good morning. Again, Pastor, we'd like to thank you for this opportunity and members of um, Emmanuel. Um, I'm a convert from Islam, by the way. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when we talk about witnessing to the Muslims, people say, well, it's got to be a tough job, you know? Especially if you see the way they hold on to Islam, even to the extent of, you know, killing themselves, you know, for the sake of Allah and their prophet Muhammad. Now, um, one thing I always tell people, we are a great commission-based church. I'm talking about the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. And four principles that Martin Luther taught us, which is very important when we're talking about outreach, and that is solus Christus, sola gracie, sola fide, sola scriptura. Solus Christus means Christ alone. Very important because Muslims don't think that way. But when we want to witness to Muslim, Hindu, or the Sikhs, or anybody who doesn't know Jesus Christ, I mean, there are people who believe in New Age doctrine. We got to remember it's Christ alone. Sola gracia means grace alone. Muslims believe in works. Five pillars of Islam. They have to live by the five pillars in order to enter into heaven based on what they do. How much do, did you do? to have assurance that you're going to heaven, they don't know. If you talk to them, they tell you, I don't know until I get there. But like Pastor said, we know we have assurance of salvation. And what a joy. Now, sola fide means what? Faith alone. By grace you have saved through faith unto good works. Last but not least, sola scriptura. Scripture alone. We have to go by what the Bible says when we witness to them. We have to go by the scriptures. You cannot talk to Muslims and just use your own smarts and think you can bring them to salvation. You have to go by what the Bible says. It's very important. Now, we're going to do a Bible class, and I will talk more about my conversion into Christian faith and the importance of outreach. Jesus Christ, before he went up to heaven, his last words, and you know, for example, when people are dying, their last words is very important, what they share with you. Now, his last words before he went to heaven was, don't do anything, wait in a certain place in Jerusalem until you receive power from above. Now that power was Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles. And then he said one thing. He said, you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Then he went up to heaven. So mission is very important. Ships are not coming anymore from Europe, from Germany. I'm talking about the Lutheran church. So for this church to keep growing and for the body of the believers, for the body of Christ to grow, we have to do witnessing. Witnesses is, is very important. It's the lifeline of the church. Now, during the uh, Bible class, I'm going to get more in, in depth about Islam, the doctrines of Islam, law and gospel, and the power of witnessing and the way we do it. And we're going to show how we walk through the IFC in Milwaukee at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, and all over the different states of, uh, uh, um, in the United States, connecting with these people, build relationships that lead to baptism. So I would really encourage you to come to the uh, uh, fellowship hall so that we can see more about what we're doing and how to encourage you and equip you so that when you see them, it doesn't take too much. You could be at a store, you see one of them there, just tell them Jesus Christ loves you. He died for your sins. You already witnessed to that person, believe it or not. Or you can just tell them the kingdom is at hand and go about your business. Now you can see them and don't say nothing to them. But if you tell them God loves you, he died for your sins, 
they walk away from you as a Muslim and they're thinking, what does he mean Jesus Christ died for my sins and that he loved me? Or what does he mean when he say the kingdom is at hand? You, you just plant the word and remember what the Bible says, the word of God is not going to come back void. Again, thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to seeing you at the fellowship hall. God bless you. Thank you, Ibu. So what can we ask you to do today? We're here to ask you to do three things. The first and most important of all is we're asking you to pray. Pray for missionaries, that God would empower them to pro boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pay for, pray for your pastors. You should be praying for them every day. They have been given the task of proclaiming that word of God to you and to this community, and they desperately need your prayers, as we all do. Pray that God would open the hearts of people so that when the gospel is proclaimed, that they would be receptive to that message. So prayer, that's the single most important thing that you can do for the outreach of the gospel. Secondly, we are inviting your financial support, not in place of what you normally give here to the support of this congregation, but we'll be doing a door offering afterwards, and if you would like to support the work of Pablo and all the gifts go directly to support Ibu's work here in southeast Wisconsin, um, we encourage you to do that. If you'd like more information about how to become a long-range supporter, uh, we can give you that information. And the third thing we're asking you to do is to grow in your own awareness. Grow in the awareness of your neighborhood. Grow in the awareness of the people around you. Grow in the awareness of the opportunities that God gives you to simply, as Ibu said, share that Jesus loves them. Grow in your own understanding of, of who they are and what it is that they believe. And, by most, and most of all, grow, continue to grow in your understanding of the Word of God. We will sing this verse in just a few moments. From him on Galilee's high mountain is this stanza. And not alone to nations in far away retreats, but everywhere I broadcast his love through crowded streets. The lives that my life touches, however great or small, let them through me see Jesus, who saved and served us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Amen.